Part 2. Communicate effectively. 10. Listen to people actively. One of the most critical skills of a people magnet is the ability and skill of active listening, or listening profoundly. The more you listen, the smarter you will get. You will also be more liked, and people will love to have conversations with you. Why? Because you'll be of a rare breed. Most people never listen. A good listener will always have the advantage over a good talker, because he or she always allows people to hear their favorite speaker in the world. Themselves. While too much talking gives you away, listening will make you look a lot smarter because you're giving importance to what the other person has to say, instead of bragging with your knowledge. So how do you become a good listener? Here we go. Listening profoundly means to listen to the person in front of you while giving them your full attention. Look at the person who is talking. Listen with your eyes, with your ears, with your whole body, and keep looking at them. Nod your head to show them you are agreeing with their points. Smile. Lean towards the speaker. Show interest. Show them you don't want to miss a single word. Ask questions. This will show the speaker that you are listening and will flatter him or her. It can be super simple questions like, and then what happened? Or, and then what did you do? Quiet down the little voice in your head that comes up with advice and a solution 30 seconds after the person starts speaking. Don't listen to answer. Listen to understand. If you are rehearsing what you are going to say next, you are not listening. Don't interrupt the speaker until he or she is finished. Or, don't just wait for your counterpart to pause so that you can begin to speak. Don't change subjects. On the contrary, ask for more. If you want to give advice, ask for permission. Most of the time, the person who is speaking will come up with the solution if you let her or him finish. Don't forget using you and your instead of me, my, mine. Try it. Becoming a good listener will take your conversations and relationships to an entirely new level. When people feel that you are listening to them, they will automatically like to be around you. Be a good listener. 11. Become an influencer. Influencing people means to get them to do what you want them to do. So, the logical first step will be to find out what will make them do it. You need to know what they want. You need to know what will motivate them, what will move them. The biggest mistake we make when trying to influence people is that we think that other people like what we like, are motivated by things that motivate us, are after what we are after. Well, in most cases, they are not. Everybody is different. Everyone has different values. Everyone likes different things, and everyone has different motivators. To influence people, you need to find out what they want. Once you know what they want, you can make them take action by telling them what they want to hear. You show them how they can get what they want by doing what you want them to do. Yep, that's manipulating at its best. So I hope, dear reader, that you just wish the best for the people you want to influence, because this power just like the power of electricity or the atom, can be used to create something beautiful or to destroy. Choose wisely. First of all, you will have to find out what people want, what they are looking for. If they want security, talk security. If they want to leave their day job, show them ways to leave their day job. If they want financial freedom, you talk financial freedom. The point is to find out what people want, and then. Show them how to get what they want by doing what you want them to do. E.g., buy the course, buy the clothes, come to work for you, etc. If you are looking for a job, you would first find out what the employer is looking for, what abilities and responsibilities are needed for the job, and then you would show them that you can fill these needs better than anybody else. When you know what somebody is looking for, you can talk the language they want to hear. So. From now on, listen very carefully to what people say. Watch with great interest what they do, and ask lots of questions. 
make an effort to find out what people want, and then use it to influence them. Find out what people want most. 12. How to convince people real quick. Most of the time, people you meet will be skeptical of you and of what you say. No worries, that's human. Whatever you are saying, they will think that you probably want to sell them something, a product, your best version, and so on. And people don't like to be sold to. They like to make their own decisions, or at least feel like they're making their own decisions. A great way to convince people is quoting someone. That's why testimonials and opinions of others, in other words, social proof, go a long, long way. Let somebody else speak for you, even if the person is not present in the moment. If you are selling something and you are asked about the product, quote a relevant customer opinion. In that case, your customer is answering the question, although he or she isn't there with you. If somebody wants to know if you are paying your suppliers on time, you can mention how happy your other suppliers are with you paying their bills on time. If you are applying for a job, mention all the good things your past employers and colleagues say about you. Notice something? You haven't answered any one of these questions. Your customers, suppliers, former employers, and colleagues have done the answering for you. It's a psychological mystery. If you tell people directly about how great you are, they will be hugely skeptical. Yet they don't have any doubts that what you tell them is true if you tell them through third person's testimonials. Speak through third persons. Quote statistics and or people. Relate facts. Tell success stories. 13. Get people to say yes to you. You probably know this already. If not, this will be a major chapter for you and can change your whole life. Getting people to say yes has a lot less to do with luck or their mood than you think. Enjoy learning a great skill in this chapter, the ability that will boost the chances of getting people to say yes to you. And don't forget, if you get them to say yes to you, you'll get them to do whatever you want them to do. One. Give people reasons to say yes to you. Everyone has a reason for doing what they do. If you want somebody to do something for you, give them a reason to do it. Of course, the reason has to be to their advantage or benefit. If not, they won't do it. Tell them how they will benefit by doing what you want them to do. 2. Ask yes questions. It's easier to get a yes from people if they are already in a yes mindset. This is done by asking them two or more yes questions. Yes questions are questions that can only be answered by yes. The idea behind this technique is that once you get people to answer three or four questions with yes, it's a lot more probable that they will continue saying yes. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be independent? Do you want to live a life free from worries? Emphasize the yes questions by nodding your head while asking the questions. You want a great future, right? Nodding your head. You want the very best product, right? Nodding your head. 3. Give them a choice between two yeses. Don't give people a choice between yes and no. Let them choose between saying yes to one thing or yes to another thing you are offering them. Let people choose between acting the way you want one way or another. Whatever they choose, they'll say yes to you. If you want a date with Lucy, ask her, would you like to meet up tomorrow afternoon or in the evening? I wish I were that skilled 25 years ago. Unfortunately, then I mostly asked yes or no questions like, do you want to go on a date with me? And mostly got the no. When you are giving the other party a choice between yes and no, you might hear an awful lot of no's. It's much better to not ask open questions. Do you want the red or the black? Instead of, do you want one of these? Do you want to start today or on Wednesday? Instead of, do you want to start here? Do you want to pay cash or credit? Instead of, do you want this? I'm not saying this will work every single time, but your success rate will increase. It will surely work a lot better than giving people a choice between answering yes or no. 
4. Expect people to say yes to you. This is also called confidence. If you look back on your life, I bet that whenever you were really confident, when you really, really expected a yes, without the slightest doubt, you got a yes. So be confident and let people know that you expect them to say yes. Of course, this technique will not work all the time, and you'll have to practice it like you practice playing tennis or golf. And then, you'll get better at it. Get the easy yes, yes, and yes, and more yeses will come. 14. Talk less, do more. You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. If you want to change the world, stop talking about it and start taking action. Pick up a pen and write an article or a book. Stop complaining about politicians. Join a political party and become more active in politics. Actions speak louder than words. If you want to impress and attract people, don't just talk about what you're going to do for them. Show them. People who just talk about the great things they will do for their friends, their company, their community, and never follow up with action lose credibility. And sooner or later, nobody is going to take them seriously anymore. What's even worse is that one day, they won't even believe themselves anymore and their self-esteem will take a hit because every time we say something and don't do it, our self-esteem suffers. If we don't follow up with actions, we are mainly telling our subconscious, what I say doesn't matter. And if we do it too often, we conclude, I don't matter, I'm worthless. So be careful about what you say and follow up with it. Talk less and convince people around you by your actions. Don't tell your friends how you're going to help them. Help them. Don't brag about how generous you are. Donate to charity. Don't tell your boss what a great worker you are. Let your work and your numbers speak for themselves. Some bosses can't see your great job, so you also have to brag about it. But that's the exception to the rule. Stop talking and start doing now. 15. Respect other people's opinions. Let's get one thing straight at the beginning. You won't be right all the time. And even the times you are right, it's a lot more beneficial for you not to prove others wrong. We don't like to be proven wrong. And if we are proven wrong in a way that hurts our intelligence, our self-respect, and our pride, we surely won't admit it. It's impossible to alter people's opinions after having hurt their feelings. Saying things like, I'm going to prove this to you, is like saying, I'm smarter than you, and I'm going to prove it. And the only thing it will cause is opposition and will make it impossible to change your counterpart's opinion. If you want to prove someone wrong, you have to act smarter. You can't let them know. Do it subtly so that nobody even notices that you are doing it. Start by admitting that you could be wrong. It changes the whole conversation. You're admitting a mistake. I might be wrong, but let's look at it. This doesn't cause opposition. Nobody will ever object to you saying, I might be wrong, but let's look at it. Instead, it will stop all arguments and inspire your counterpart to be just as honest and open-minded as you. Show respect for the other person's opinion. Put yourself in their shoes and try to understand them. Be diplomatic and courteous. You will get much further with this tactic than with just bluntly telling a person that they are wrong. Did you ever notice that when you admit that you are wrong, instead of defending yourself, the other person becomes empathetic and instead of making fun of you, actually comforts you? If you want to be right and have to point out other people's mistakes all the time, soon you will be alone and nobody will want to be around you. Use diplomacy. Be smart. Be subtle. Don't prove other people wrong. 16. Be authentic. Be transparent. Be you. If you want to be successful with people, you have to be real. Be authentic. Be you. Don't play any roles. 
let people feel that what they see is what they get. It might be difficult at first because we're all afraid that people might not like us the way we are. But that's just another mind movie, another creation of our mind, the world's greatest producer of soap operas and drama. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses, embrace vulnerability, and take responsibility for your mistakes. That's all you have to do. Not more, not less. People will connect with you on a deeper level. You don't have to fear the judgment of others. They will love you for being real. The worst thing you can do is say things or agree with people just to please them. That's not being skilled with people. That's a sign of low self-esteem. Say what you really think. Of course, that doesn't mean you can be rude or tactless. Remember, if anyone has different ideas to yours, that doesn't make them any less valid. Be honest and transparent. Nothing good comes from being dishonest. Speak your truth. Don't put on a mask. Stop playing roles to please others. Stop faking and allow yourself to be you. The rewards are awesome. Funny enough, you will notice that the more you are yourself, the more people will be attracted to you. Try it. Stop playing roles. Be you. 17. Communicate effectively. One thing successful people have in common is that they are very good communicators. They know exactly how to express their ideas, emotions, wants, wishes, hopes, and disappointments. This is a considerable advantage over more introverted people or people that can't express their ideas or don't know how to start a conversation, especially with strangers. But no worries if you belong to the second group. This can be fixed in no time. Here are some suggestions. 1. Stop being afraid of saying something too trivial, something inadequate, or something that makes no sense at all. And above all, relax. Because 2. You don't need to be perfect. Stop trying it. Nobody can fascinate others all the time. Be authentic and speak from the heart. People will appreciate it. 3. It's small talk. It's casual and not meant to be brilliant. It's supposed to be easy and to get the conversation going. Don't try too hard and just do it. Hint, like everything else, it gets better with practice. Probably the best way to start a conversation and become great at small talk is number four. Get your counterpart to talk about themselves. Ask questions about the other's interests, like why, where, how. For example, where are you from? What are you doing for a living? And the family? Start the talk with questions about your counterpart, and then lean back and listen, and ask some more questions. They will love you for it. In a world where everybody continually wants to talk about themselves, listening is gold. This is a great icebreaker. And you start your counterpart off on one of the topics they are experts on, themselves. Get others to talk about them, and they will swear you are the greatest conversationalist they ever met. Keep on asking questions, and they will say that you are one of the most interesting people they've ever met. Ask questions, and you're almost there. 18. The deadly sin in human relations you need to avoid. Remember what I mentioned in one of the past chapters. As humans, we are innately selfish. You are human, so you will be tempted to talk about yourself. You want to shine. You want to be admired. You want to be acknowledged. You want to impress. Anyways, you are much better off to resist this temptation. If you keep focusing the conversation on others, rather than on yourself, they will have a much higher opinion of you. One of the best preparations is always to ask yourself what you want to get out of the situation, before every meeting, phone call, or conversation. Do you want the other person's permission for something? Do you want their business, their goodwill? If you want any of this, keep the conversation focused on them. If you only want to blow up your ego, then yes. Talk about yourself all the time. But then, 
don't expect anything else out of the conversation. If you want to blow up your ego, be like the author who, after talking two hours about himself, turned to his companion and said, Enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about my latest book? If you want to be successful, let others do the talking about themselves and listen. Only talk about yourself when you are invited or ask to do so. If others are interested in you, they will ask. If so, talk a little bit about yourself and then turn the focus back to them. Don't be selfish. Keep the focus on them. Part 3. Basic Rules 19. Say thank you. If you have read other books of mine, listened to an interview, saw me speaking or on TV, then you know that I'm a huge fan of gratitude. I think it's one of the most powerful forces in the universe, and being very grateful not only brings good things into our lives, but it also makes us notice more and more of those that are already there. On our way to become people magnets and find new friends, gratitude should be one of the main ingredients. It's not enough to feel grateful and appreciative towards people and staying silent. You must show this gratitude and appreciation to everyone who deserves it. It's human nature to like and respond to people who appreciate us and show us gratitude. Be grateful to people and show it to them with kind words or little gestures, and you can be assured that it will come back to you multiplied. The attitude of gratitude has countless benefits. If you practice it only for a couple of weeks, you'll be happier, more optimistic, and more socially connected. You'll sleep better and get fewer headaches. You'll have more energy, more emotional intelligence. You'll be more forgiving and less likely to be depressed anxious, or lonely. Being grateful is as great for you as for the other person you are grateful to. It's worth a try, isn't it? Anyways, there are some ground rules to follow. Once again, you have to be sincere and really mean it when you thank people. People can distinguish clearly if you are genuinely thankful or not. If it's not real, you'll have none of the benefits. Say thank you or I appreciate you or I'm glad to have you in my life, loud and clear. Say it with joy. Maintain eye contact. It means a lot more when you look people that you thank in the eyes. Say thank you, Peter. Thank you, Mary. Use people's names. It makes a huge difference. Practice thanking people. It will change your life. If you want to become a master at thanking people, don't only thank them for the obvious. Thank them for the not-so-obvious. So simple, yet powerful. Few things are more important than the ability to properly thank people. Let the power of gratitude change your relationships and your life for the better. Twenty. Admit your mistakes. There is nothing bad about mistakes. You are human. Humans make mistakes. Stop feeling like a bad or useless person simply because you make a couple of mistakes every now and then. Did you ever know somebody who had difficulties admitting their mistakes? Maybe they made up excuses and justifications, or even worse, blamed someone else for their mistake. How did it make you feel? Did it build trust with this person? Did it make you want to get to know them better and spend more time with them? I don't think so. So, what conclusions do we draw from this? Right, if we want to build trust with people and influence them and want to be the real thing, we have to find the strength of admitting our mistakes, even if it's difficult. Don't waste your energy making up excuses or justifications. Make admitting your mistakes a habit. It's a sign of strength, and as it's not such a common trait, you will surprise people, and they might even admire you for it. Admitting a mistake and taking the consequences takes much more strength than denial, and it's much healthier. Instead of losing energy denying it, it will liberate you. When I worked at Volkswagen in Mexico, my boss let me drive his car when I had to run an errand. The plant is enormous. It's like a city of its own, 
so you get around by car. One day, driving around and not paying attention, I hit the curbstone with the right front tire. About three hours later, my boss wanted to use his car and saw that he had a flat right front tire. He came back into the office and told us. About four people had used his car that day. Everyone looked at the floor. I could have easily played the innocent, looked into the air, and done nothing. After two tense minutes, I gathered my courage and told him. It might have been me. I hit the curbstone. I saw the relief on my colleagues' faces, and from looking at the floor, they were transitioning right away and making fun of me. My boss told me, well, the least you can do is help me change the tire. And off we went. I apologized once more to him. He was grateful that I admitted my mistake. This incident took our relationship to another level. He knew he could trust me and that I would always admit my mistakes. Recognizing your mistakes is a sign of strength and maturity. You only have a problem if you don't learn anything from your mistakes and repeat the same mistake over and over again. If this happens, you should look at the pattern and search for the lesson and learning experience. That's it. That's all you have to do. Admit your mistakes, but avoid repeating the same ones over and over again. 21. Stop gossiping. If you want to have success in your dealings with other people, it's inevitable to let go of the toxic habit of gossiping. I know, it's very tempting to hear the latest rumors from other people. The problem is that most probably, the person who tells you these rumors starts spreading rumors about you once you turn your back on them. But what is even worse for your reputation is what happens if you are the one spreading the dirty little stories. What if your listeners come to the same logical conclusion I mentioned above? The worst thing that can happen to you is that they start asking themselves what you say about them behind their backs once they turn them to you. So, if somebody starts gossiping in your presence, the best thing to do is to change the subject. Oh, Charles, I'm not interested in this stuff. I'd rather hear about you. How have you been? Tell me about that last vacation of yours you were so excited about. What else is happening in your life? Or say, Sorry, I don't really like talking about other people who aren't present. Stay away from gossip and rumors, as they are only harmful and destructive. Besides, they can lead to huge misunderstandings. Remember that sometimes you tell somebody a quite harmless story, and as it goes from one person to the other, the story completely changes and gets worse and worse. You start saying that Anne has a bad cold, and at the end of the line of gossip, Poor Anne is on the brink of death. Don't damage your trustworthiness and relationships by gossiping. Have sincere and profound conversations and reap the benefits further ahead. Stop gossiping. Everybody wants to be with a person of integrity. 22. Stop judging. If you want to become an influencer and make friends, you have to never engage in one very toxic habit, judging and condemning others. People don't want to be judged, period. People want to be liked, made to feel important and appreciated, not judged. Put yourself in other people's shoes and walk a mile in them before you even think of judging them. Everybody we meet on our journey is fighting their own unique battle, and we have no idea what they are dealing with just as they have no idea what we are going through. Be kind. Show empathy. I know it's easier said than done, but on your way to be a people magnet, there's no way around it. If there are things you don't like about other people, things that really bother you, pause a moment and reflect. Are these maybe things that bother you about yourself? Get aware of the fact that each time you're judging someone, you're actually judging yourself. Observe what most bothers you about other people. Is it, for example, that they never are on time? I know. That's really bothering, especially if you are always on time, right? Look a little bit closer. Are you really always on time? Or maybe in some areas you also aren't, and let people wait. Sometimes when something bothers us about people, we need to look at ourselves 
because we might be doing exactly those things to other people without noticing it. That's why you have people whose life is in disarray telling you how you should live your life. People with a ton of debt telling you how to deal with your finances. Overweight people telling you to eat healthier. Unorganized and stressed people giving seminars for time management and organization, and so on. Before judging other people, we should get our own house in order. I try to avoid judging people as I have found myself more than once in the same situations as people that I judged before. It was when I was in the same situation as them when I came to understand them. There's really something to the saying. Walk a mile, or maybe better, ten, in my shoes before you judge me. Don't judge people. Once you are tempted to judge, take a look at yourself and see if you have the flaws you judge in other people. 23. Forgive everyone. Have you ever been around bitter people who can't let go of the past? People who are still holding a grudge because someone did something to them a long time ago, and they keep ruminating and complaining and talking about it? How is it? Do you like their company? I bet not. Remember this when you are in a similar situation. It's no fun to be around the complainers and the bitter ones. The antidote to this is forgiveness. To be a forgiving person is not only good for your relationships with other people, it's also the fast track to success and happiness. This is not about being right or wrong. It's about you being well and not wasting energy. Forgive even if it was the other party who wronged you. You're doing it for yourself. Being resentful or angry with people, reliving hate and anger over and over again is toxic. It's toxic to your relationships. It's toxic to your energy. It's toxic to your health. They say being angry and having resentments towards another person is like drinking poison and hoping the other individual dies from it. If you're not already doing it, from today onwards, do yourself a huge favor and forgive everybody, including yourself. I repeat, you're not doing it for the other person. Rather, you are doing it for yourself. Once you forgive and let go, you will sleep better, you will enjoy your present moments more, and a huge weight will be lifted off your shoulders. Holding grudges never did anyone any good. It makes things worse. It's hurting you more than anybody else. The negative feelings that you are feeling will hurt your health and character. Your focus will remain stuck in the past wounds, and this could attract even more unpleasant experiences into your life. Don't misunderstand me. Forgiving others doesn't mean that you are stupid, nor does being a forgiving person mean that people can walk over you as they please. You set clear boundaries, put limits on others' behavior, or call them out on the spot. People who don't accept these rules or who hurt you have to go. You don't need them in your life. But do yourself one favor. Don't hold grudges. Let them go. Forgive them. Forget them and move on. Learn from the experience and be open to new, better adventures to come. Don't be a fool. Forgive everyone and be fun to be around. 24. Keep your word. Remember, a good reputation built over a long time can be destroyed in seconds. For example, by not keeping your word. If you talk a lot but don't follow up with action, people will lose trust in you. This is the worst that can happen because all personal and professional relationships are built on trust. And it gets even worse because you know who also will lose trust in you? You. You pay a high psychological and emotional price whenever you lie, cheat, or are dishonest. Every commitment you make, even those you make to other people, is ultimately a commitment to yourself. If you don't follow through with your commitments and your promises, you are sending yourself the message, my word is not worth anything. Hence, I'm not worth anything. How can you avoid this? 1. Never make promises you can't keep and over-deliver on everything you do. 2. If you say you are going to be somewhere, be there. 3. Mean everything you say. No wishy-washy talk. If you don't mean it, 
don't say it. 4. Do what you say you're going to do. 5. Never tell a lie. If you can't, don't, or won't do something, tell people the truth right away. 6. Don't play with people's emotions. 7. Don't say things only to impress. Be authentic. When you tell lies or when you want to impress people constantly, what you are actually transmitting to yourself is, I'm not good enough as I am. I need to be someone else so that the other person will like me. That's when your self-esteem and self-confidence take a hit. When you tell the truth, the message you communicate to yourself is that your words are worthy. Your words are important. You matter. In no case should you make great promises which you can't fulfill. Don't promise greatness and then deliver mediocrity. This will damage your reputation and will repel people. Be smart and do the opposite. Under-promise and over-deliver. This will boost your value in the eyes of others, but also in the eyes of the toughest critic, yourself. People will feel great around you because you are constantly exceeding their expectations, going the extra mile every single time. A nice byproduct of this strategy is that you will also experience a lot less stress and be more relaxed. Don't undermine your reputation and your self-worth. Tell the truth and keep your commitments. 25. Treat others as you would like others to treat you. There is one concept all religions and philosophies have in common. It was the first thing I was told 25 years ago when I started work at Disney World. It's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Treat people as you want to be treated. I've followed this rule most of the time in my life. It has brought me great joy, significant relationships, and probably saved me from many troubles. Do you want to receive more compliments? Give more compliments. Do you want to be more admired? Admire more. Do you want to be loved more? Love more. Do you want recognition of your true worth? Recognize the true worth of others. Do you want sincere appreciation? Give sincere appreciation to others. If you can give without expecting to receive anything in return, you will take your relationships to another level. Start now. If the waiter brings you the wrong order in the restaurant, tell him, I'm sorry to trouble you, but I ordered. I'm sure he will tell you, no trouble at all, and return with the right order. Why? Because you let him save face. You showed your respect. Little phrases like, I'm sorry to trouble you. Could you be so kind? Would you mind? Please, go a long, long way. I saw a funny picture on social media a while ago. It was a price table with the following prices. Coffee, 5 US dollars. A cup of coffee, 3 US dollars. Good morning, 1 cup of coffee please, 1 US dollar. We live in a society that longs for appreciation, recognition, and feeling important. The life of many people could probably be changed if only someone would make them feel important, appreciate them, and recognize their value. You can be that someone. How? When? All the time. Everywhere. As always, you have to be sincere in your appreciation, recognition, and praise for other people, or it won't work. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. 26. Remember people's names. Our name is the most significant connection to our identity and individuality. It sets us apart and makes us unique among all others. For some, it's even the most important word in their world. Yet, most of us don't remember names. Many times because we are so busy rehearsing what to say next that we forget the name the person we just met told us. We don't take the time to concentrate and fix the name in our mind through repetition. No worries, you are not alone. It even happens to me. I'm learning as I'm writing this book, and at the end of this chapter, you will know why remembering people's names is so important and which benefits it will bring you. So why should we remember people's names? First of all, 
Using someone's name when interacting with them is one of the simplest and most profound secrets of success. Why? Because we show people that we care about them. We care enough about them to remember their name. It's a sign of courtesy and a way of recognizing them. Don't underestimate this, even if it seems to be so unbelievably basic and simple. When you remember a person's name the next time you meet them, you will make quite a lasting impression on them because you will show them they were important enough for you to remember their name. This could be the start of something special because this person now always positively associates you. You remember their name. You made them feel important and respected. Dale Carnegie was right. Our name is the sweetest and most important sound in our ears. Every time someone mentions it in a conversation, it makes us feel good. If the conversation is positive, that is. It makes us turn towards the speaker. And it gives us a boost of happiness and the feeling of, he or she did it again. They mentioned my name again. I must be important. If this is just me, please let me know. I might have to have a look at it. How do you feel when someone mentions your name? Important, right? Every time you say the name of a person, you charge them with a series of positive feelings. And at the end of the conversation, they most probably will feel positively connected to you. The most charismatic people are always described as making the person they are talking to feel like the most important person in the world. How are they doing it? They are using this person's name frequently, and they are asking questions. So tell me, John, what brought you here? That's very interesting, John. Excuse me for a second, John. I just see my friend Barney over there. Try using names everywhere, in the supermarket or in shops. Remember the name of the waitress, the cleaning women, and of the senior executive, and see what it does. Probably magic. Remember people's names. You'll make people feel more important, and most importantly, you build better relationships and trust. 27. Avoid arguments. Do you ever really, really win an argument? Yes? I don't think so. You might have won the argument, but you surely lost your opponent's sympathy. Is proving somebody wrong making them like you? Sometimes it's better to maintain peace and harmony than to be right. You really don't win anything by being a know-it-all. You only make people feel uncomfortable and in the worst case, lose their face. Remember, this is a book about making friends and influencing people. Arguments, knowing everything better than your peers, ridiculing people, have no place in it. Avoid arguments. 99% of all arguments end with each of the parties being even more convinced that they are right. As I said before, you can't win an argument. If you lose it, you lose it. If you win it, you also lose it. Why? Because you made the other party look inferior and might even have hurt their dignity. And yes, you probably haven't changed their opinion anyway. How many times did you win an argument with your boss? Did the promotion come right away, or are you still waiting? How many times did you win an argument against a client? Were you right? Yes. Did you win? Yes. Did he buy? Probably not. If possible, concentrate on things you agree on instead of focusing on things on which you differ. If someone wants to start an argument with you, agree with them. The blue car is better than the red one? Yes, you are right. Period. No room for an argument. It's not a sign of weakness to avoid arguments. It's a sign of strength. Remember, you can't win anyway. If you argue and contradict, you might win an argument now and then. But it's a sour victory, because you will never get your opponent's goodwill. And which do you prefer, a victory or a person's goodwill? Have you noticed that the more you argue with a person, the more stubborn they become? People want to feel important, and as long as you argue with them about a matter, some people get this feeling of importance. So, instead of wasting your time arguing with them, give them the feeling of significance and win their goodwill. Arguments are resolved by putting yourself in the other person's shoes, honestly trying to see things from their viewpoint. Avoid arguments. Save your time. 
You can't afford to lose time arguing, nor can you afford to take the consequences. So, when you disagree with someone, remember the following things, so as not to let it turn into an argument. Control your temper and listen. Let the other party talk and don't interrupt. Are there any parts where you agree? Be honest. Apologize for your mistakes. This will surprise your opponent. Remember, not many people are able to admit mistakes. Promise to study your opponent's ideas and think them over and thank them for their time and feedback. Be sincere. Ask yourself the following questions. Could they be right? What benefit will my reaction have? What price do I have to pay if I'm right? Is it better to be quiet? Where is the opportunity here? Avoid arguments. You can't win them. Part 4. Lead by Example 28. Praise and acknowledge people honestly and sincerely. Praise and acknowledgement are basic needs of people. We need to feel important. We are craving for appreciation. Remember how you feel when someone praises you or gives you a compliment. Remember how it brightens up your moment, afternoon, day, and even sometimes week. Mark Twain said he could live for two weeks on a good compliment, and so can I. What about you? Studies prove that teams with managers that acknowledge and praise their work are up to 31% more productive. Companies that have a work environment based on acknowledgement and praise multiply their benefits. We don't even need studies for it. Just remember how you feel. And now I'm going to tell you a secret. Others will feel exactly as you do. Never let kind words go to waste by not saying them. Tell people the kind things you would love to hear. Don't spare with praise and acknowledgement as it does miracles. And it's completely free. It doesn't cost you a thing to say nice words to others. So, from now on, go through life looking for someone and something to praise. And then, do it. Just have in mind that the praise has to be sincere. If it's not sincere, don't give it. Praise the behavior, not the person. It will create an incentive for others to act the same way. Examples. Your work is excellent rather than, you're a great guy. Your art is simply beautiful, rather than, you're a good artist. Praising and acknowledging people has a remarkable side effect. It makes all individuals involved happy. The receiver and the giver. By praising and acknowledging, you are actually doing something good for yourself. Seeing the happiness and gratitude you bring to others by adopting this habit will make you feel incredibly good. Make saying kind things to at least three different people a daily habit. 29. Show everyone kindness and respect. Show every person you meet kindness and respect. Every person has a story as compelling and complicated as your own. Just as you are extraordinary, so are they. Give them a fair chance to interact with you. Don't make the mistake of judging or discarding them right away. You can learn something from everybody you meet on the journey of your life. Many times in my life, people I first thought of as, what a strange person, or he doesn't seem to be very bright, have become my best friends. Meet people with kindness and respect, and great things can come from it. Every now and then, you might end up disappointed when you are kind to people, and they don't respond to it or maybe even take advantage of you. Don't let this change you. It's not your problem. It's theirs. It's a price worth paying for meeting all the other great people who will come into your life. Even the rude people you meet deserve your kindness and respect. Well, actually it's them who probably need your kindness most. Remember, if somebody is rude to you, it's their problem, not yours. Bear in mind that what goes around comes around. If you treat people with patience and respect and are nice to them, you will attract nice people into your life in the long term. One good trick I learned a long time ago when I was a waiter at Disney World in Orlando, Florida, is that if somebody was rude to me, I became nicer and nicer to them, 
and the more offensive they got, the nicer I became. It worked. In 99% of the cases, I ended up winning their sympathy. They were not used to this because usually they got their energy from people who got defensive and angry with them. The best way to show rude people your teeth is to smile at them. Show everyone kindness and respect. They deserve it, even the bad ones. 30. Don't give direct orders. Be more subtle. People don't like to be given direct orders. It goes against our nature. You can convince people much more subtly by asking questions like, Did you consider this option? Or, Do you think that would work? Or, What would you think of this? Maybe this one would work better. Always give people the opportunity to get things done themselves. Let them come to their own solutions. Let them learn from their mistakes. That's how it sticks. It has the positive side effect that it doesn't make a person lose face and maintains their feeling of being important. This kind of treatment of people will encourage their cooperation instead of going against you. It will also avoid resentment and anger. Asking questions is not only a smoother way to get results, it also stimulates the creativity of the person you ask. It's much easier for people to accept a decision or an order if they at least feel that they had their part in the process. Often, if you have a challenge, it's a much better way to explain it to your employees, friends, or family than to give out strict orders. If you ask people, they come up with the best solutions. Use that potential. Effective leaders use the power of questions instead of giving direct orders. 31. Believe in people's potential. If one of your employees or team members suddenly doesn't perform anymore, you can threaten him, which only causes resentment and maybe further suffering of his performance. Or you can even fire him. But that doesn't really solve anything, right? It will cost you three times his or her year's salary to onboard, train, and get a new employee to his level. A friend of mine who is a successful businessman, in this case, invites his employees for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. He tells his employees that he was pleased with their performance, but he noted some performance drop and asks what he can do to help. How can we solve this problem together? If you want to improve a specific skill in a person, act as if he or she already had that particular skill. Goethe already knew this hundreds of years ago. If we treat people as they ought to be, we help them become what they are capable of becoming. Remind your employees of their outstanding work in the past. Give them a vision of themselves they are eager to live up to. Believe in them, and they will rise to the occasion. It works. It's not magic. It's the Pygmalion effect. Our belief in a person's potential brings that potential to life. See them as if they already had the trait. Talk to them as if they already had the trait. Let the Pygmalion effect work for you, and you will see miracles happen. When Robert Rosenthal and his team went to an elementary school in the late 60s and did some intelligence tests on the students, they told the teachers that students A, B, and C had extraordinary results and were academic superstars. The teachers could not mention this to the students, nor treat them differently, and to make them understand the seriousness of the project, they were even told that they were being observed. At the end of the year, the tests were repeated, and to no one's surprise, A, B, and C posted off-the-chart intellectual ability again. Again? Well, the funny thing was that the researchers lied to the teachers the first time around. When tested the first time, A, B, and C were absolutely ordinary and randomly picked by the researchers. They concluded that the mere belief of the teacher in the potential of the students brought that potential to life. You can easily lead people and make them trust you if you have their respect, and you earn that respect by believing in them and showing respect for their abilities and their work. Remember that the Pygmalion effect can happen anywhere. The expectations you have about your coworkers, your children, your friends and spouses, whether or not they are ever mentioned, can turn that expectation into reality. Believe in the potential of people, and you will see miracles happen.
32. Be an example. We are continually influencing the actions and attitudes of other people, not only of those we come in contact with, but also of their spouses, kids, and colleagues. So the question is, in which direction will we influence them? The best way of influencing others is by being an example. Treat other people how you want to be treated. Adopt the attitude you want other people to show you. You might have heard the theory that other persons are like a mirror towards us. Observe this fact closely. Tal Ben Shahar once told this story about a mother with her son, who came to see Gandhi for some advice, and the mother told Gandhi, Please tell my son to eat less sugar. Gandhi watched both of them, and after a moment of silence told the mother, Come back in one month. The mother was astonished, as she was keen on Gandhi talking to her son, but followed his order. Four weeks later they came back. Once it was their turn, Gandhi looked at the kid and said, Son, you really need to eat less sugar. The mother looked at him and said, Master, it has been such a long trip, and we had to travel a long time, twice, to see you. Why couldn't you say that a month ago? I don't understand. And Gandhi said, Because a month ago, I was eating too much sugar. The best way to change people is to change them by your example. Don't tell your partner to go to the gym and lose some weight. Go to the gym and lose some weight. Don't tell your employees to take every phone call while you don't pick up the phone. You take every phone call first. If you are a boss prescribing company training for your employees, you should be the first one participating at that training. When your employees see that you are serious about change, they will get serious too. You need to accept that you cannot change others. What you can do is to accept them as they are and be the best example and person that you can be. Instead of complaining about your partner, colleagues, or spouse, be the best colleague or spouse possible. Not satisfied with your employees? Be the best boss possible. When you shift from others have to change, to what if I change? Maybe then the other also changes. Everything will change. Be the example of what you want to see in the world. 33. Remain humble. Remain humble. While some people in our ego-driven world think that humble persons are weak and passive and are completely lacking of self-respect, science and religious scholars agree that humility is a virtue and character strength. Most of the time when we look closely at this, we notice that the majority of successful people in business and sports, in reality, have remained humble. Who would you rather spend your time with? A person who is successful but remains humble? Or an arrogant braggart? Humble people have a clear idea of their abilities and achievements. They acknowledge their flaws and admit mistakes and limitations. They are open to new ideas, even if they don't entirely agree with them. They appreciate the value of everything and accept there are many different ways that people can contribute to this world. Studies show that humble people are more admired and that most people see the character trait of humility as positive. In one study, humble teachers are rated as more effective and humble lawyers are rated as more likable by jurors. In another survey, more than 80% of the participants indicated that it's important that professionals demonstrate modesty and humility in their work. In this book, Gratitude Works, page 124, Robert Emmons shows us 20 humble practices in daily life by Paul Wong. They are the following. You will see many of the principles we talked about in this book. Acknowledging your wrongdoing. Receiving correction and feedback graciously. Refraining from criticizing others. Forgiving others who have wronged us. Apologizing to others we have wronged. Enduring unfair treatments with patience and forgiving spirit. Thinking and speaking about the good things of other people. Rejoicing over other people's success. Counting our blessings for everything, good and bad. Seeking opportunities to serve others. Being willing to remain anonymous in helping others. Showing gratitude for our successes. Giving due credit to others for our successes. Treating success as a responsibility to do more for others. Being willing to learn from our failures. 
assuming responsibility for our failures, accepting our limitations and circumstances, accepting the social reality of discrimination and prejudice, treating all people with respect, regardless of their social status, enjoying the lowly status of being an outsider and a nobody, remain humble and enjoy the advantages of it. 34. Let the other person come up with your idea. Let's talk about ideas. Which ones do you find better? The ones you come up with or the ones that people want to convince you of? If you are like most people, you will prefer the first option. Coming up with your own ideas. Well, surprise, surprise, so does everybody else. No one likes being sold on something or being told something. We want to feel that the decision was ours, or that the idea was ours. We want people to ask us for our opinions, our wishes, and our thoughts. So why not use this to your advantage? The best way is always to plant the idea in somebody's mind and let them think about it and meditate on it. Frequently, you will see the same person coming up with the same idea a couple of days later, defending it as if it were their own idea. I have to admit that this happens to me from time to time. The easiest way to let the other person feel it was their idea is asking. When you make an offer, ask the client what he really needs, or ask them to complete your offer to themselves. If you go on a family vacation, ask your family where they want to go and come to a consensus. If you are going out with friends, ask them what they like best. If you go on a date night with your spouse, Ask him or her what they'd like to do. So easy and yet so difficult, right? Ask and let the other person come up with your idea. 35. Be on time. On your way to becoming a master of human relations, don't you ever underestimate small courtesies, such as being on time for an appointment. Punctuality is a sign of discipline and respect for others. Without it, you might come across as slightly offensive, even if you are the nicest person in the world. If I haven't convinced you yet, bear the following French proverb in mind. The while we keep a man waiting, he reflects on our shortcomings. True or true? Of course, there are cultural differences. For example, while in Mexico and Spain, people are very relaxed about punctuality. In Germany, not being punctual is seen as highly unprofessional and might ruin your chances in any endeavor. A friend of mine lost a multiple $100,000 business opportunity because he showed up 15 minutes too late for a business appointment with a German company. While in some cultural circles, unpunctuality can be seen as, I'll be late so that you can see how important I am, others will see it as disrespectful and not forgive you. Be punctual. You don't even have to do it to be exceptionally polite, but instead, you're actually doing it for yourself. I would even recommend you to arrive 10 minutes early. This will already give you a head start in any meeting or negotiation. Why? Because you can use these 10 minutes to relax and to prepare. You can compose your thoughts and get used to the environment instead of arriving in a rush. When I started being punctual, or better said, arriving 10 minutes early, I noticed that those 10 minutes made me feel a lot better and gave me a lot of peace of mind. I felt very relaxed. I also felt very comfortable, professional and polite. In fact, I now feel uncomfortable when I arrive just in time. Try it for yourself and see if it adds to your life or not. Be on time and enjoy the benefits of it. 36. Focus on the other person's strengths. Did we already talk about the power of focus? It's one of the most decisive influences of your daily life. Have you ever thought about buying a new car and then saw precisely this type of car everywhere? Have you or your spouse been pregnant and suddenly pregnant women seemed to be everywhere? Or you had a cast and suddenly everyone seemed to have a cast? When we look for something, we see it everywhere. This is called selective perception. Your focus is essential because science shows that how we experience our life 
is a matter of interpretation, a matter of choice, and it's up to us where we choose to put our focus. Our focus creates our reality, so we see more of what we focus on. In one phrase, our focus determines our overall perception of the world. So, if we focus on other people's strengths, what will happen? Yes, exactly. We'll see more of their strengths. Will that improve our personal relationships? You bet it will. This is a magic cure for all our relationships. Imagine focusing on the strengths of your spouse instead of nagging. Suddenly, you see all the great things you fell in love with in the first place. Or your employees. Suddenly, you'll be able to see their full potential instead of their weaknesses and faults. Look at other persons in a new way. What are their unique strengths? What are you most proud of thinking of them? What do they do best? What are their most significant personal and professional accomplishments? What gifts do they have? What makes them unique and compelling? Take this a step further. What would happen if we concentrated on our similarities rather than our differences? Exactly. We'd see a lot more of what we have in common. Would that be great for our world? You bet. That's undoubtedly a much better foundation to come to agreements than focusing on our differences, right? In all conflicts or negotiations, the most essential ingredient is to have a common goal. If not, they fail. So from now on, focus on similarities. What can be the common goal? Focus on the other person's strengths and see them in an entirely new way. Thank you.